All right, problem 39, we have that as, at a certain school, students can choose whether to eat in the school's cafeteria. And a reporter working for the school's newspaper polled students on their reactions to changes in the menu at the cafeteria. For each student leaving the cafeteria in one 30-minute time period, the reporter used the coin to determine whether to stop the student and ask how he or she felt about the new menu. In the reporter's article, it was stated that a random sample of the students showed that 89% of the school's student population was happy with the new menu. So which of the following statements is true? All right, so this is, deal, this is gonna be dealing with, you know, sampling properly. So let's look at A. Because each student leaving the cafeteria is randomly selected and could choose to answer or not, this is a random sample of a student population. And the 89% is an accurate measurement of the school, school's population view of the new menu. So um, we can't really say that because we can argue reasonably that students who eat in the cafeteria um, could have some, um, some uh, associated factors um, about their, well, well, if students eat in the cafeteria, they're going to think differently, you know, for the, I would say, about, about the school food, about the cafeteria's food, versus students who never eat in the cafeteria. Um, students in the cafeteria will probably be more, um, insightful maybe maybe they'll be less picky because they eat in the cafeteria all the time but their their opinions are going to be different than the, a student who doesn't eat in the um cafeteria regularly so we can't generalize these results to the entire population so a wouldn't be right all right b because students self-selected whether to eat in the cafeteria the sampling method might be biased okay and the sample might not be representative of all students in the school yeah, so this is what I was getting at. Wow, you read my mind. It's like I wrote this problem. So B will be, an an be our answer. But let me just discuss briefly about the other ones and why they're not the correct answers. So C, we have the survey would be, have been more effective if the reporter had collected the data in one 15 minute time interval or one 15 minute time period rather than in one 30 minute time period. No, no, no I mean, I would, that's not really gonna make sense unless like, we were told explicitly that students were only in the cafeteria for 10 minutes or something. And maybe the rate was, or the rate of students leaving was different, but probably not. Uh, D, the survey would have been more effective if students who cared about the food would could have called the reporter to tell how they felt about the menu, so that only students with opinions on the subject would have been surveyed. That's what we don't want. Again, we want a general, um, general view of, of, of everybody, not just the people who care a lot. Um, because no treatment was imposed on the students. In the, well, this is not an experiment, so bang, that's wrong. So we're, it's B for sure. All right, down to the last one, problem 40. So we got Ms. Tucker travels through two intersections with traffic lights as she drives to the market. The traffic lights operate independently. The probability that both lights will be red when she reaches them is 0.22. The probability that the first light will be red and the second light will not be red is 0.33. What is the probability that the second light will be red when she reaches it? Interesting. Um, so let's have something to like represent the first light being red, the second light being red. So let's have um let's have A be the first light, B be the second light. And we'll say that um, AR, that's when the first light is red, BR is when the second light is red. And A and R versus just A when it's not red, or N and B. So let me do light number two, light number one, we'll say. And these are when it's red. And then these are when it's not red. Okay, so then, we're told that they're independent, and we're told the probability that both sides will be red when she reaches them is 0.22. So that means we can multiply the probabilities, the probability of the first light being red, or AR, times the probability of BR is equal to 0.22. And then the, the probability that the first light will be red and the second light will not be red is 0.33. 
So this will be the probability that of a r first light being red times the probability of the second light not being red. So this probability of just b being 0.33. And we want to just find in general, what's the probability of the second light being red, so the probability of br, just in general, that's our goal. Okay, so here we kind of, we essentially have a system, system of equations here, if you um, are careful in, in spotting it. So remember, we want to solve that, we want to solve for this value. So what we can actually do is first, p, these two, the pro, remember, the, light, the second light being red and the second light not being red, these are complementary. So the probability of BR plus the probability of B is equal to one because either the light is red or it's not red. So they're both, have, they're both gonna have to add up to one because they make up all the possibilities. So let's just rewrite this just for um, PB. So the probability of B is then just equal to one minus the probability of BR. And now we can replace the second equation with this. So we'll write the probability of AR times PB or one minus the probability of BR equals 0.33. Now, if you see here, the probability of AR or the first light being red, we can solve for that by just dividing both sides by the probability of the second light being red. So the probability of AR is just 0.22 divided by the probability of BR. Now, we just have these equations that we're working with, the first light being red, the second light being red. And just to make this easier to kind of like symbolize, we're, we're just going to replace AR with X, and then BR will be Y. So in other words, oops, in other words, we can go from there. Um, the probability of X, or no, actually no, sorry. Let's, so let me use a completely different color. So again, replacing this whole thing with X, we can say, oh my, Pen, I can't get a good pen going. What's going on here? I'm gonna have to resort back to my red. So we'll just say X equals 0.22 divided by Y. Okay, just, re just replacing those with X and Y. And then Y would just be here. So this one allows us to write X times one minus XY. equals 0.33. And then see, I can rewrite, put that X instead of that, for each X, I can just put 0 0.2, 0 0.22 over Y in its spot. So what I can do here, plug that into this equation, this will be 0.2, look, moving up. You zoom out a little bit. So I'm going to go 0.22 for this. Oops, you know, replacing that with that. 0.22 over y minus 0.22 over y times y, or just times y over 1, equals 0.33. So these y's will cancel and I'll essentially just get 0.22 over y minus 0.22 equals 0.33. Let me add the 0.22 to both sides. So I'll get 0.22 over y is equal to 0.55. Multiplying both, multiplying both sides by, point, by, by y. Let me go back over here and dividing by 
I'll get that 0.22 over 0.55 equals y. And y was just what I used for the probability of the second light being red. So calculating that, with our calculator, 0.22 divided by 0.55, and bang, get 0 0.4. 0 0.4. And then the answer is A. Right. And there we go. We are done with the multiple choice section of this AP statistics exam. So you should take a break. Maybe, you know, get a Gatorade, maybe do a little workout. Um, but yeah, hope that helps. Good luck so far and keep it up.